All right, so we've got a new node called split to instances. And we check this out right here. This is our new node, We've got a group ID. So you can create group IDs with this, individualize it, input and output that, and then change things by selection, point, edge, face, spline, instance, and layers. So it's getting kind of deep in geometry nodes. So let's make something with this. Have a little bit of fun doing it. This is a quite a few applications for this. So you can have a lot of fun. And I'm going to show you just one way how to use this. I'm sure people are going to come up with tons of tons of really cool ways. Animate this, put this in simulation zone, blah, blah, blah. You know the routine. Let's jump right in. I will be using Blender 4.1. You can use the alpha or beta. I am using alpha though. It's the October 27th version. So you have something up to date because this is pretty new, like within the last few days. So shift A, no more of shift A, S, just shift A. And then you can type in split and you'll get split to instances. And this can just go directly in here between the group input and output. And we can give ourselves a touch more room right here. And let's put in a join geometry. We're going to need that pretty soon. Go ahead and join it up now. Make things look somewhat decent. Now for this, all you have to do, let's cut out that geometry. It's not really going to work for us. Let's put in a grid so we can see what we've got, and then we can go back and make that with the cube as well. I'm just going to plug in the grid. Let's bring up the vertice count to something like 50. doesn't have to be too much. And what I want to do is create a texture off of this. So off of the group ID, let's just put in a math multiply. And this will give us a control value. And then out here, we can dump a white noise texture. And I'm going to plug it in for the value here. Now, I like the Voronoi texture all day long. So we'll get the Voronoi and we'll plug the position into the vector. So we get vector to vector and then we're outputting this float, the multiply. And what we want to do is create a nice little random setup. And we're going to translate this now real quick so you can kind of understand what's going to happen here. Let me grab my annotations. So what this is going to do is this is going to create a Voronoi pattern, obviously. And it's going to have that nice Voronoi jewel pattern. And what it's going to do is it's going to, with the geometry here, the, the amount of vertices, it's going to create instances of this entire mesh. It's all going to turn it into an instance based on the texture variation we put in here. So you could literally just do just about anything you want. You could throw noise texture in. And it's going to create instances of the pattern that we plug into it. Just, you know, very basic, uh, but that's what it's going to do. And get rid of all this fun stuff here. Press T to get rid of that. And now what I want to do is Shift A, type in Translate, and I'll get the Translate instances. Now for the setup between here, and the reason I did the join is so we can extrude this. You'll see in a little bit. So we can drag out the group ID. Let's type in random, we'll get a random value. And we don't want an integer, we want this to actually be a float. And I'm going to plug this into the group ID. And I'm going to pull out 
and grab a math divide. There we go. And from here, because this is a float going to a vector, we'll need a combine. Just grab your combine XYZ. Plug it in the Z. Vector to vector. Voila, you're done. Thanks for watching. No, just kidding. Seriously, uh, what you want to do now is come over here to the multiply and we can output these properties just to make it make a little more sense. I'll pin my um, properties panel here. I want to export the seed value. I haven't really got too much out of that, uh, but we can pull out the scale. And we could pull out the vertice count and just tag that into both. That way it just controls them both. I don't have to change too much. And this value right here is going to break up the instances for us. And we now have our instance plane. So we'll grab our value. We can rename this. What do we want to call this? We'll just call this the split. Uh, so we'll just bring that value up and voila, there you go. Wonder if I've got cavity on here. Let's turn that on. Kind of see a little bit better. And if you wanted to, in this particular instance, pun intended, I don't believe that the extrude uh, is going to look very good, but we can just throw it in there for the fun of it. Turn off. Individual point zero one, and yeah, that's not bad. That's cool. And right here, I suppose we could just cut that uh, main. And let's see, we've got kind of a height adjustment here, if you will. And then, of course, get like a neat little mid level kind of setup there between those two. And then you can play around with the detail. A number of variations that you kind of think of. And then for the split, you get this, which is pretty cool. And I want to export the offset as well. And kind of play around with that. And that is actually would give you an interesting kind of a uh, level maker, all kind of different things, puzzles. Like I want to plug shortest path into this and do a bunch of other like really crazy things. Um, yeah, so that would be like a level adjustment right there. You kind of play around with that. That's pretty neat. I like to have some physics in there too. That'd be nice. So this is going to be amazing. This is going to be a big, big deal. I think that you take one mesh and turn it into an instance. That's going to be pretty wild. So now I want to plug the cube in instead and I'll get a subdivide mesh I'm in the wrong search give me a little subdivide mesh or here on this side and just go ahead and turn that level up at whatever you want to maybe like seven eight whatever you can handle with your PC and now the first account won't do anything. Obviously, we're not connected there. And so you can kind of play around with the scale. Doesn't have to be too much. Just kind of tool, tool around with this thing. That's pretty cool. And these are all instances, which is pretty neat. And so you can group that and have quite a bit of fun. Anyways, that's pretty much it come back with some more updates. I do want to throw a subdivision surface in here as well. Kind of tool around with that. Nice shade. Set shade smooth. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. So now this could very well be turned into a snow maker in essence, if you will. And you can then change how this kind of shows up. You can animate this for water droplets. I mean, it's pretty cool. This is, this is nice. It just kind of give you guys a rundown 
on what you can actually do with this. And when you plug this into the simulation, I think this is going to be one of the most powerful nodes that we have right now uh, to throw in to Blender and just come up with something really nice, really quick. Uh, I will actually put this blend file on my Gumroad so you guys can just pick it up. It'll probably look just like this when you open it. Uh, I'm going to save it now. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Make sure to smash the subscribe, smash the like.